Hello people of YouTube, it's Deephack here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.19 and Eagle Dynamics A10C2 Tank Killer Module. Welcome to Tutorial 10, Mavericks. Today we're going to cover all the standard Mavericks, with the exception of the Laser Maverick, that will come in a later tutorial. So today we're going to look over the use of the AGM-65D, G, H, and K variants. Uh, now, the, the D model is the standard infrared uh, guided Maverick with a small warhead. Uh, the G model is the same, but this version has the larger warhead. The H is a CCD model, and the K is also a CCD model. Note that uh, all of these Mavericks are capable of force correlate, which is where you can actually target a, a point on a target as opposed to just uh, centroid tracking, with the exception of the D model. The standard D model um, small warhead infrared Maverick cannot do force correlate. It can only do centroid track. So, let's take a, a quick look at how we get set up here. Uh, I'm actually going to change some of the pages on the right-hand side here. Uh, I'm going to give us the Dismiss here, and I'm going to give us the Maverick page here. So, if I go into the Maverick page just now, uh, this was an air start, so an important thing to note is that the EO control is on. If you'd done a cold start, you would have to turn this on yourself, and all of these versions of the Maverick take three minutes to align. They have gyroscopes and other bits and bobs in them. So, you'll note the EO timer at the bottom right. That tells us how long it has been since EO was commanded on. In this case, it's almost ten minutes. So uh, that's that's worth noting. Um, you, you have, in, in various versions of the Maverick, you have a limit for how long they can be turned on. Uh, this is usually anything up to like 40 minutes. So, you know, for the purposes of this video, that's okay. Uh, you would probably turn on EO on fencing in, in most cases. So uh, you'll note that we have the legend sensor down the left-hand side right now. That means that we don't currently have a weapons profile selected that includes a Maverick. So right now we can use this display, but right now um, it will not actually allow us to launch a Maverick. It will only allow us to use the Maverick kind of like a targeting pod. A pretty basic one, but uh, yeah, we can use it in that way using this screen. Uh, you have this adjustment control here as well, uh, and you also have a slew control. Now, the slew defaults to five. Note that lower numbers are actually faster, and higher numbers are slower. So five is a pretty good middle ground. You can set it anywhere between one and nine. Um, so if you put it to nine, if I hit nine on the UFC and put it into slew, we now have a slew of nine. If I press coolie hat to the right long, I now have control over the pod, and you'll see that it's very slow. Uh, and so 9 could actually be quite good for doing very, very fine adjustments. For now, I'm going to put it back to 5, and that makes it a little bit quicker. So, um, you'll note, I'm actually, I'm going to change the polarity so we can see everything better. We've got the crosshairs. When the crosshairs are open, the Maverick is not locked onto anything. Uh, they will close around a target and sort of jiggle very slightly. Uh, we have these uh, bracket indications for the field of view. If I press China hat forward short, I FOV in. If I press China hat forward short again, I FOV out. You only have two fields of view on all of these Mavericks. You then also have this cross which shows you where the Maverick seeker head is pointed in relation to bore sight. So that's kind of handy to know. And that's basically all the symbology that you have here uh, as per default, unless you're actually engaging a target. If I press China hat aft short, we will return to bore sight. And now the, the, the seeker head is just looking forwards and that cross disappears. So, um, yeah, let's go over the controls quickly, the HOTAS controls. Uh, we have, as you saw, China hat forward short. Uh, will FOV in and out. China hat forward long will slave us to our current speed. That's something you'll commonly do. China hat aft short will bore sight us. If I press China hat aft long, it'll slave us to our current steer point. Uh, on the TMIS switch, we have forwards to manually command a lock. Uh, and actually, this is the, the brake lock indication. You get this jiggling and the, the crosshairs open if it was unable to find anything to lock. As soon as you start slewing again, the symbology reappears. Uh, TMIS aft short will ground stabilize on the point that you've 
uh, commanded it to stabilize. And from that point forwards, the, the seeker should be stabilized uh, to, to the ground, which is very handy. A boot switch, uh, we have forward on the boot switch for black symbology, aft on the boot switch for white symbology. This will be handy in different scenes, especially with the infrared maverick. And in uh, center, uh, putting the boot hat switch into center uh, is used to enter automatic or force correlate modes. Uh, so there you go. It's possible to carry the Maverick on the LAU-117 uh, rack, which allows single carriage, uh, and you can also carry them on LAU-88, which allows up to triple carriage, and that's actually what we're doing here. You can see here that I've got AGM-65H on pylon 3. It's on an LAU-88. We have three of them, and they're currently in standby. Uh, this, this would show you the status of their alignment. You know, they could be an off, align, standby. Um, I think you can also indicate flap if you've got your flaps down. So you should raise the flaps if that's the case. Uh, Mavericks can only be carried on pylons 3 and 9. And yeah, they can be carried singly on the LAU 117, or they've been carried singly, doubly, or triply on the LAU 88 for a maximum of six Mavericks. So just be aware of that. Um, also note that when you're using the LAU-88, uh, when you fire a Maverick, the next Maverick on that pylon will uh, immediately slew to the same target location. That's called a uh, quick draw, I think. So anyway, uh, that's the basics of getting set up. Uh, I'm going to show you a very basic employment now. If we go up to the HUD, I'm going to go Cooley Hat Aft. You can see now that my HUD is now sensor of interest. I'm going to go Demis to the right, and you'll see that we have Maverick Profile, and it's armed and ready. Now, if I go right again and do another profile, it's going to tell us that that's Pylon 3. We have two profiles that are both just called Maverick. That That's, you know, that's automatic. It does that for you. If I go left on the Demis, it's going to confirm that's Pylon 9. Right on the Demis, it's going to confirm that's Pylon 3. So I have two profiles with the same name, but the HUD will indicate which Pylon it is. In my case, Pylon 3 is an H model, which is CCD. Pylon 9 is a D model, which is infrared. Uh, I'm going to go for Pylon 3. There we go. This is the infrared one. Repeated on the HUD, uh, we actually have... Actually, I'm going to have to move the seeker head for us to see this. We have what's called the Maverick Wagon Wheel. This will always show us where the Maverick Seeker Head is currently pointed. Uh, and then we also have uh, the Dynamic Launch Zone down the left-hand side. Uh, that's also repeated on the Maverick display itself. You'll note that the sensor legend is now missing. Uh, we are now in kind of a, a, a weapons employment mode. And once we have the Maverick Seeker Head pointed at the ground, we can us aft to ground stabilize it and we will get the DLZ down the left hand side in this display as well. It's indicating maximum range, minimum range, current range at that point where that's a nine mile shot if we took that shot now and we have time of flight displayed at the bottom of as well. Uh, also note that we have our uh, attitude indicator here just to give us a bit of a, an indication. Weapons profile is top left, currently selected pylon is also top left. So that's us ready to go. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go China hat aft long. Actually, no, no, that's not what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we're on the correct waypoint first. So Cooley hat aft, we've got the HUD sensor of interest. Demis forward, we've got steer point number one. Let's go back to the Maverick display. Cooley hat right long. China hat forward long to slave to speed. Now, the only problem is this speed, I set the altitude wrong, so I need to slow down, and our targets are here. I'm going to China hat forward short, that's me FOV'd in, and uh, we are now ready to engage. This actually, oh, this is the H model. Okay, right, I've got the wrong one selected. <laughs> let's uh, let's change this profile, because I actually wanted to show the infrared one. So, Cooley hat aft, let's go uh, Demis left, that gives us the other profile. There we go. That looks a lot more like an infrared maverick. Yeah, that was just the CCD. So China hat forward long again. Slew it down. There's our targets. The vehicles are very, very visible uh, in the infrared version. Okay, let's uh, take ourselves out of active pause so that things are actually moving. Uh, let's, uh, you can see we're not stabilized. Let's ground stabilize. That makes it all much easier. We've got a lock. Pickle. And that is rifle. 
the Maverick is away. It's going to track the target. Let's accelerate time because this is this shot's uh, quite a long shot. Normally, maximum range is somewhere in the region of 10 nautical miles, depending on conditions. But uh, down it comes. And it looks like it has a perfectly good track there. Target destroyed. And I think during the course of that shot, I died. <laughs> For some reason. I think I crashed the aircraft into the ground. Okay, let's get reset and I'll demonstrate another shot. Okay, we're all reset. How embarrassing. I thought I had the aircraft in autopilot. I clearly did not, and I crashed into the ground. Uh, so, uh, this time I've selected Pylon 3, which is the uh, the H model Maverick. This is a CCD Maverick. Uh, this one can do force correlate. So let's actually quickly demonstrate that. Uh, I've got the Maverick page up, I've got the weapon selected, and I have a weapons profile. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, boat switch middle, that puts us into the right mode for force correlate. This this version can force correlate. And we can now slew over any point on the ground and let go. And as soon as we let go, the crosshairs will close. And we can effectively engage any point on the ground, ground stabilised. We don't actually have to have uh, a full contrast lock, which is kind of good. What it does in this case is it does a full scene lock. Um, this is used for hitting specific points on larger targets. It can also be used for you know, like hitting a window on a building or hitting a particular part of a ship. Uh, Mavericks are actually often used in anti-shipping roles. Uh, what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and put a Maverick in between two of these vehicles. I don't know if this will actually work. And see if I can damage both. Uh, I'm actually going to come out of active pause and we'll see as we come in a bit. Let's not hit the ground this time. Okay, I'm going to refine it a little, and I'm going to fire there. And this time we're going to make an escape manoeuvre. And let's see what the missile does. So, that's the great thing about Centroid Track. It will do like a full scene track. You can effectively put the missile anywhere you would like. It doesn't actually have to... The missile itself doesn't have to decide that's a valid target or not. This is looking a bit dodgy. Yeah, I do not think the missile is tracking where I pointed it. Uh, that's unfortunate. Oh well. And I'm sure I'm about to crash soon. There we go. You get the you get the idea anyway. That's the correct employment. Uh, you simply put boot switch into middle and move the crosshairs where you would like them. If you find that you're not getting a good um, track, you can then Timus aft short to ground stabilize first and then try and refine the track. Uh, and that should work for you. Uh, as I said before, if you have multiple Mavericks on a low 88, the next Maverick will immediately queue uh, to the same location you just fired the previous one. Uh, but I'm going to go China Hat aft and just rebore sight this chappy. And that is it. That's in fact everything that we have for the Mavericks. Very, very simple. With the exception, of course, of the laser version of the Maverick, which we will cover in a future video. One other thing to note is that on the Dismas page, you have a missile sub page, and in here you also have the EO switch. So again, you need three minutes to get the, the Mavericks ready to use. Ensure that you turn this on or off, either from here or from the Maverick format page. Note when it's off, you will get the indication off here. Uh, you can turn EO off uh, to, to save coolant and such like, and then later turn it back on. You, that will incur another three minute alignment though, so just be aware of that. So, hope you all enjoyed that, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.